What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Cracker Crumbs update. <laughs> I think I'm going to try to do a lot of the, a lot more updates on stuff because there's a lot of cool uh, shows that are out now. And, um, trying to get back in the comic game, get a few comics here and there. and um, But shows are easier because it's free. <laughs> so there might be some, some stuff on shows I'm going to do reviews on. But um, funny thing is... Uh, comic books, uh, like for next week obviously, Wednesday come around, it's what the hell is today, today is, well technically today's Monday um, next week I, I went to order, well from last week this is getting confusing um, last Wednesday's haul I ordered the week before and then now this week's haul I ordered the week before um, but when I went to order it, obviously I'm, I'm still a week ahead uh, most of them of the newer issues that are coming out on when this Wednesday were sold out on Midtown Comics. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I guess uh, there's a huge uh, run for Catwoman because Catwoman number 13 was sold out. I guess the uh, the Batman thing is that great that uh, they sold out. Um, as well as the uh, the Venom, which is Minimum Carnage Part 3. That's sold out. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So quite a few were sold out. So now I gotta make a, a mad dash to the comic book store, uh, I called the one of the managers, one of my friends from Bailey's. I was talking to him. He's like, "Hey, he's like, he has to check his list just to make sure." Um, but he should have a couple extras of the ones I'm looking for. So he said, if he has them, he's definitely gonna throw them to the side for me, which is cool. Um, I am gonna do a little itty bitty comic book review. I'm gonna go over some stuff with the the contest, uh, as well as some stuff with shows. Um, it's funny because I was actually talking to people because comic book men came out, uh, well, technically yesterday, but tonight, and uh, a lot of people ask me, did you watch the show, do you watch the show? Um, last season, I, I watched it, it wasn't too bad, um, but I didn't think it was all that great, and it was funny, because that year, when they were done, I actually went to Jay and Silent, Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash, and um, met uh, Walter Flanagan, and uh, got a couple photos you know, in front of the store, and got a photo with him, uh, which I will show you right now. See that? There you go. Uh, me in front of the secret stash and Walter Flanagan. Um, I forget who the other guy was that was there. It wasn't the guy with the really long beard. It was the other white dude. Uh, he was there. I didn't really talk to him that much. But it's funny because if you watch the new episode of Comic Book Men, um, when I went there, it it doesn't really look like that. Like it kind of does. It kind of doesn't. It's it's it was a cool show. Uh, show cool <laughs> cool store. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, they were very friendly when I went in there. They helped me out a lot. I bought a lot of really kick-ass back issues for really great prices. Uh, it's where I got my web of Spider-Man number one, and I got a lot of the McFarlane Spider-Mans there that I was had a huge gap in. And um, very, very helpful. Like, I had a list, and, you know, he's like, oh, what are you looking for? Um, and uh, I was talking to Walter Flanagan mostly, and I was like, oh, I'm really looking for the McFarlane stuff. He's like, oh, hang on a sec. Let me check. And he went through it really quick. He's like, oh, I don't have any right here. He's like, but hang on a sec. He's like, you know, don't go anywhere. And he came back, like, ten minutes later with a stack of them. And he's like, are these the ones you look for? I'm like, oh my god. And he's like, I'll give you a great deal on them. He's like, you know, um, don't worry about what the price is. He goes, we can negotiate it. And um, I said to him, I was like, wow. He's like, hey, he's like, we have we have whatever you're looking for. I'm like, oh my god. And he really did give me a, a great price on them. Uh, some books were like six bucks. He gave it to me for two. Um, some books that were two, he gave it to me for a dollar. You know, just really good deal. Because uh, I bought a lot of stuff. And then towards the end, I was, I was like, you know, I'm not really... I was like, I'm kind of a fanboy. I was like, but I don't want to really piss you off and bother you. I was like, but can I get a photo with you? He's like, yeah, no, no problem at all. And that was the photo you saw. And uh, when I was leaving, obviously, I took a photo in front of the store because I asked him, I was like, is it cool if I take it in front of the store? He's like, yeah, no problem, no problem at all. And um, that was the trip. But the funny thing, before I get into the whole... Well, actually, let me talk about the store. It, when you walk in, um, you know, I'm a big guy, so everything seems smaller to me, so maybe that's it. But when you walk in, it's... Um, like, they have the register, like, right there at the door. And then on the, there's, like, a, just a wall of, as you see in the stores, like, the wall of comics. And then there's, like, a little itty-bitty rack with a lot of the trades. And then right in back of the, the, the rack is the back issues, which is, you know, there's a lot of back issues. And then there's, like, this kind of, like, say if you're walking in, like, picture yourself walking in, going straight. 
back issues are right here, and then like right here is this kind of an open space, but they have like the Buddy Christ, like this giant statue, and then to the left of that, they have their, where they do their podcast room. You know, it's sealed off. You know, it's for when they obviously when they do their podcast, but it's kind of tight. Like it's like all right, you know, and then they have like above it, they have um, Blunt Man and Chronic and like the the Blunt Mobile like hanging up in the ceiling. It, it's huge. So it's it's just weird because you look at it like it looks so big, but then when you're in there, it looks so small. When you look at the episode uh, tonight, if you watch it or have seen it, it, you know they have the back area. It's open. They didn't have that when I was there. That that's like a new thing. Like they must have moved stuff around and made that area bigger or opened it up, because right there it was just the Buddy Christ, like this huge statue, and um, you, it was like in a huge display case. Like you couldn't go anywhere near there. So they must have changed it around. But um, the other crazy thing is that it's it's really in the middle of nowhere. Um, I live in New York and. It was such a bitch to get to it. Like we had to, obviously we had the um, the GPS, and it was nuts. Like I mean, it was worth it. It really was. And the town that they're in was really, really nice. I'm not gonna say anything bad about it because it really was a nice town. And if I had the money, I'd definitely live there. Um, it's in New Jersey, but um, it really was just like in the just flat out the middle of nowhere. Like you're on this parkway. Like we're taking the parkway the entire time, and then um, the GPS like makes you go. You know, and get off at an exit, and then it's just like woods, just like an hour or two of woods, and you're like, all right, where the hell am I? And then there's like a baseball field, woods, baseball field, woods. Then there's a school, baseball field, woods, 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 church. I'm like, oh my god, we're gonna get killed. And then all of a sudden, huge town. <laughs> I'm like, oh man. And it's right by the water, and it, but it was it was fun. It was an interesting little trip. And then of course, um, I had the the four day pass for the Philly Comic Con this year, and that's pretty much what we did. We did like this whole mecca kind of thing, because uh, I told my fiance I was like, you know, that'd be really cool to we'll stop there first, and work our way to Philly, and that's pretty much what we did. We stopped there and went down. Um, now, uh, as for the show, like I said, last season wasn't too bad. This season it looks like it might be a little better, because last season um, I was kind of going in the impression when I watched the show, because that was before I even went to the store. Um, that they like to lowball you, like they give you, you know, really small amounts of money for your stuff and really kind of bust your balls. But um, this season they don't seem to do that. They kind of negotiate a little bit, but they're not really going. Like I remember some guy was like, I want 300 for this, and like, all right, you know, 400, and he's like, well, how about 350? Well, how about 340? You know, they weren't kind of going, you know, too bad. It wasn't too bad. And then when I went there, like I said, I went to the store. They were unbelievably nice, and you know, and they really hooked me up. So if you're in New Jersey, definitely go there. They're, it's definitely worth it. It's cool. Just for, like, the fact that say you went there. It was just awesome. But, uh, moving on to The Walking Dead. See, I'm bad. I've never, I've never read the comic. And when I started getting into the, uh, when I found out there was a comic, there was already the show. And then I watched the show and I loved it. And I'm like, oh, I gotta get the comics. But the comics are so expensive. It's just, like, it's ridiculous how expensive the, like, the older ones, just, like, to start off are now. Like, I'm seeing them going for, like, three, four grand on eBay. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Um, so, uh, I was going to get the trade paperbacks soon. I was telling my fiance about that. I was like, you know, we really should get into the books because, you know, everyone tells me how great the book is and I don't want to start, like, I was kind of going to get the newer issue and I'm like, ah, but I don't want to start right there. I want to kind of start from the beginning and work my way up. So, uh, she was saying, oh, for your birthday, which is, uh, soon enough in November. She's like, oh, maybe we'll, we'll get you a couple books, but, uh, Mongo Stomp Time 07, Gary... Gave me the great idea of getting the omnibus. I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Instead of just buying, you know, 50 trade paperbacks, get the one or one or two of them and you're, you're all set. So good man, good man, good looking at. Um, but uh, the new season, uh, so far the first episode, I really, I thought it was awesome. But it just, I find it funny how, um, it, like last season went from Carl stay in the house or to where where's Carl, where's Carl to basically... Here you go, Carl. Here's a silence nine millimeter. You got point. Yeah. <laughs> he runs into a house. And boof, boof. Yeah, I'm like, okay. I guess uh, Carl's trying to be a bit of a badass now. That he's got his his silence nine millimeter just, yeah, you know, cranking it out. But it was funny because it looks like they made a makeshift silencer out of a flashlight. I was like, look at the size of that silencer. Oh man. But not bad, not bad. I can't wait to see how it goes. And it was kind of funny because my fiance and I were getting in an argument. She's like, oh, why would you bother going? to a prison I'm like you know what I was like quite honestly like, that's a pretty smart move uh, if you can make it safe you know you can make it in, in uh, impregnable you can't you can't get in there you know if, if you can 
you know, get get them all out, you know, the zombies or whatever, get the hell of the walkers out of there and, you know, dispose of them, you can make a good run of it. I mean, you can have posts if you have enough weapons, like if it's an armory that wasn't touched, you know, you're all set. You can hold people off for a long time with that stuff. Um, so it's not a bad move, but the only problem is if you're in there and you make it secure, but you start running low on ammo and food and then you have, like, Resident Evil, look at the last, not the last one, the one before the last one, they're in a prison and it's surrounded by millions and millions and millions of zombies and you're screwed because there's no way out now so that's kind of the problem like it's cool to have but then if you get low on stuff and you have to make runs and all these things know you're there you're screwed you are absolutely screwed so it's kind of like a double-edged sword i guess but uh moving on moving on do some comics and then we're gonna talk about some stuff with the contest and uh gonna move on from there um this is funny, like, I showed this before, the uh, Irredeemable Ant-Man number two. I got it for 50 cents, and I was like, oh, you know, why is it 50 cents? Didn't really look at it closely, but it's really, really messed up. Like, it's it's all bent. It's got these huge creases going down the back. There's a huge cut going down the cover. Um, a lot of stuff is messed up with this book, but it wasn't a bad book. So I really can't complain because it only cost me 50 cents, and it wasn't a bad read. It wasn't great, but, you know, it wasn't bad. Moving on, moving on. I still have yet to read the Batman issues, so that's why a lot of videos I'm kind of holding off watching on YouTube because I'm like, oh, I don't want to know yet. I don't want. I want to read it first, through it. Um, but moving on to this, Avengers vs. X Men Consequences Number One. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, basically, Cyclops is held in a prison. They don't tell him where he is, but he's got like you know he's cuffed. He's chained with his legs. He's got this giant like helmet on with ruby quartz visors in there. And then he's got the restraint collar that cuts his powers, um, but it wasn't it wasn't too bad. I, I can see it. Just for me, it's just really odd to see Cyclops as the bad guy because I, I when I you know grew up with comics, Cyclops is always the leader of the X Men, and now it's like he's this twisted evil character that killed Professor X, and you're just like. Um, but I guess we got to see. Like basically, in this, like Captain America goes to the Wolverine who who runs the school. Uh, and Wolverine had just given a eulogy for Professor X. And uh, he told Wolverine, he's like, you know, you should really go down there and talk to Cyclops and, you know, whatever. And then Wolverine pops his clothes and he goes, if I go down there, I'm not going to talk to him. So Captain America kind of said, all right, you know, we'll let this slide. Um, but then towards the end of the book, you see Wolverine, uh, they throw Cyclops in the visitor center. He's like, got a visitor and uh, Wolverine's there with like a six pack of beer. And he's like, you kill anybody lately? And you know, so who knows? The second one comes out uh, on Wednesday, so I'm going to get it see how it goes. Uh, moving on to uh, this, The Uncanny Avengers number 1, which I have quite a few different covers uh, and copies of myself. Um, this was actually really, really good. I really enjoyed it, and um, I'm kind of kicking myself because I'm like, I, I kind of, I've always been a Marvel fan, always. Like, I, I, that used to be my thing, and then I just kind of started getting into DC around 2001, 2002. Um, which is bad, but I was never really a DC guy. Uh, and Marvel, I started hating them uh, because I'm, because of their price tag. I'm like, you know, I'm really getting sick of paying like four ninety nine, three ninety nine. Granted, two ninety nine is not that great, but it's still better than three ninety nine. But when the Marvel Now was announced, I'm like, oh god. I was like, you know, do, am I gonna bother with it? You know, maybe I'll just get all number ones. Uh, I don't really want to pay that much money, but. This, if, if anything, if I'm going to stick with anything so far, it's going to be this, because this really rocked. Um, this was really, really good. I'd give this like a 10 out of a 10, you know. Awesome book. Um, it blew my mind, and I'm going to put some spoilers in there. There it is. Put some spoilers in there. Because most people have already read it already, but what the hell. Um, basically, like in the beginning, you see this, like this guy like messing around with like this guy's head, like cutting his head open messing around with his brain and it turns out to be avalanche is the brain they messed around with so avalanche like kind of goes psychotic and starts blowing stuff up and you know doing all sorts of crazy stuff and the avengers kind of stop him and captain america kind of recruits havoc he's like you know we really need you for this new team we want to build mutant and you know normal humans together and havoc's constantly saying, i don't want to be bothered i'm out of this i don't you know i'm done forget about it and um when avalanche attacks basically havoc and captain america team up and take him down and then um, you see Rogue uh, 
Scarlet Witch goes to Professor X's grave and is paying her respects and Rogue has a fit and Rogue touches her but it cancels out like because Scarlet Witch's powers are unpredictable I guess so it kind of cancels out her power rather than her taking it which is weird and all of a sudden Professor X's uh, grave explodes and you know you don't know what the hell happened but they kick the crap out of Rogue and Scarlet Witch and later on you see another body getting worked on with its head and then at the very end of it, it's the Red Skull holding a brain, and it's Professor X's body. So he took out Professor X's brain to do something with. But that's the end of the spoiler in there. But it's just insane, so I really am looking forward to reading number two of this. Uh, moving on to uh, Scarlet Spider number 10 versus Venom. It's the minimum punish number two, which I'm, I'm still getting pissed. Uh... This is a good book. I'm not pissed at the book. I'm pissed at the fact that whatever paper they're using is just really pissing me off. I got this thing here, and as I took it out to read it, I went, you know, grabbed it, took it out of the out of the thing there, and of course, removing it, didn't even read it. It got a huge friggin' print on the damn book. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I was like, enough with this paper. I'm getting really, really pissed off of with the paper that Marvel's using. You friggin', you grab the book and you leave a thumbprint or you leave a fingerprint or whatever. I'm not result. I'm not going to be wearing gloves to read my comics. That's just insane. Well, not insane, but I might have to go that route. But I don't want to get down to that point where I have to freaking wear gloves to read a damn comic book. And I'm tired of buying multiple copies because I got you know a fingerprint. So as much as this book was awesome, I'm not buying another one because I got a fingerprint on it. But it pisses me off. I freaking take it out of the out of the bag to read it and huge thumbprint. But anyway, um, this is pretty cool. In this book, Venom, obviously Scarlet Spider and Venom, Venom kind of loses control for a second there and reverts to his old form where Eddie Brock was Venom. And it was really cool. It just felt like the old days. I'm like, yeah. But um, it's a very interesting book. They go into like a multiverse kind of thing, kind of like Ant-Man, I guess, you know, or the Atom from DC, like shrinks down to this itty-bitty thing. And Carnage goes in there to try to wipe out the entire universe. But it's a good book. I actually can't wait for the third part. So far, the new books that I've gotten, I was not disappointed at all. Um, the last one I'm going to review, because I don't want to have a too long of a thing, uh, Avenging Spider-Man number 13, which is the continuation with uh, Deadpool. Um, it was interesting. It was pretty funny, actually. Um, this guy's called the Disco Hypno Hustler, or something like that. I forget what he's called. But if you want to see him, his first appearance, I believe, was in Spectacular Spider-Man number 24, back in the 70s. So this guy's basically stuck in the 70s from the prison he's in but it was a pretty funny book so it's definitely worth picking up uh moving on moving on although marvel really has to lower their price tag if you're right on because if they really don't then I'm, I'm, i am going to get a lot of the number ones and then that's going to be it i might just stick with one book but uh moving on to a little bit of a contest update a little bit bitty bitty um I have been listening to everyone, well, listening, reading everyone's stuff about the contest, everyone, you know, telling me I sh should, uh, start taking people out of the contest that are bitching and moaning, which is a pretty good idea, which I've given, I mean, I think I've been pretty fair, especially with the pri prizes, you know, telling people, you know, this is what you can win, and a lot of people are very happy with the prizes, but some people are just bitching and moaning about it, and it's getting a little ridiculous. It has kind of, it has stopped, so I guess the warning I gave last time was kind of good that, if you have a problem with this stuff, then tell me, and I'll take you out of the contest. No big deal. Um, but a couple things I am going to throw into the Wolverine package. I figured, what the hell? Uh, these are two things that I drew myself, but uh, I figured I'd throw them in there. I have shown them before, I think. But I'm going to throw this into the Wolverine package. Drew this myself. I actually signed it down there. My initials. It does come with the case. Uh, you can hang it up, do whatever you want with it. Uh, like I said, drew this from scratch. Very, very cool. So you get that with the Wolverine stuff. As well as this one. Another one I drew from scratch. I did sign it down there. <laughs> uh, this one I actually kind of copied from uh, my my poster that I have hanging up. I looked at it I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, I, I do like that. What the hell? I'll give it a whirl. So uh, you get this. And these two are drawings that I did myself for you can't stress it enough that I drew it myself. <laughs> uh, so you'll get these with the Wolverine package as well. Just for kicks. Shits and giggles, I say. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, it's been a long, long update. I am going to be doing a video 
hopefully ex really soon, might actually do it right after this, uh, about Deadpool Rules 91, just one for fun, to see everyone's first comic they ever bought and favorite comic, so my friend, I will be making a video for you as uh, soon as possible, and uh, yeah, that's it, I want to thank everyone for watching, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, and I really want to thank everyone for entering the contest, I have a lot more entries that came in uh, the past couple days, I think I'm up to like 38 or 39 people now, something like that. <clears throat> and a reminder, it ends Wednesday, everyone. Wednesday is your deadline. Uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, the 17th, 2 p.m. New York time. If you don't have your video in by then, you are out of luck. And to everyone who's entered, I've said it a billion times, and I'm going to keep saying it because maybe it'll help somebody out, but I wish you all the best of luck. Uh, so the winner goes to spoils. <laughs> anyway, catch you all later.